So what's going on people, welcome to a video on the channel, welcome to another Battlefield 2042 video. In today's video we're going to be going over all of the confirmed details that were provided on the 15th of June. Mainly because if people didn't know there was a Battlefield briefing, just to go over some of the details that we might not have known about Battlefield 2042. So hopefully you guys enjoy, remember to like and subscribe and let's get straight into some of the details that we found out. First of all we went over some of the conquest changes that have happened towards how conquest works. Now as people already know, conquest has changed into instead of just capturing certain zones, you have to capture different sectors within a zone. And the reason for this change was to allow the conquest gameplay to be sectioned out into different clusters. Now their way of describing clusters was to provide the example of Hourglass, where there's different sections throughout the entire map where there's going to be different types of gameplay. Whereas the stadium on the map is going to bring more of a close quarters type of gameplay, so that means it kind of clusters a lot of the players towards that area who want the close quarter type of uh, game mode. And within the stadium there's going to be multiple capture zones or multiple sectors to take control of, so that means you can actually take control of the whole stadium and that entire point. And then there's going to be the same type of sector control in different areas throughout the entire map, but providing different types of gameplays. Especially within the city centre itself, where there's all the skyscrapers, there's still going to be a lot of vehicle warfare throughout the entire skyscraper city, alongside still some close quarter action. Now something towards the servers that people don't know is that if the servers that you're joining don't have enough people within that server, the servers will be filled up with AI players until they can actually find real players to fill those spots. So that means compared to previous Battlefield games you won't be able to go into servers and just have a 4 versus 4. The entire server will be filled out with AI players. We also found out some details about the maps and some hidden details about the maps also. First off there's going to be 7 maps at launch for the All Out Warfare modes. Where the All Out Warfare modes so far are the Conquest and Breakthrough modes. And with all seven maps, they showed off the comparison image from what the map sizes are for square foot compared to previous maps on previous battlefields. And they are quite large, which it does explain the reason for changing the conquest capture points, because that would be incredibly clustered if they still had that size of players of 128 players on some smaller maps. We got a small detail about the orbital map and how it's going to lay out. As they went over the rocket site area, they said that there's going to be some worker housing areas just around the perimeter of the rocket site, as well as a large open area so that means you can actually view the rocket going up. And from the rocket area to the mountains on the side, there is going to be a cryo facility. And to make your way to the cryo facility, there's going to be three different routes. One of which is going to be across the mountains, another one is going to be using the roads, but then the third one is going to be using a tunnel. And this tunnel can be accessible via vehicles to travel through. Another feature that they gave details about was the weather effects that will affect the gameplay of each of the matches. Now the two weather effects that they went across was the tornado and the sandstorm, both of which are not guaranteed weather effects on every single match that you play. And both of these effects can have completely random paths throughout the entire map. So at one point you could have a tornado go straight through a capture zone and destroy everything in its path. And the last feature that we found out about for the maps itself is that they are bringing back the Battlefield 4 interactive features which include doors, gates, bridges and the bollards which can all be interacted with to stop players and vehicles getting to capture points so fast. Now they moved away from that and they went towards more of the specialist and weapon details that we'll see in Battlefield 2042. First of which is that they are still having the traditional classes within the game, but they're now classed as categories. These traditional classes are the Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon and within all of these different categories there's going to be multiple specialists to take different forms of different types of action within these categories. Now the reason to split the classes into separate type of categories and to have different layers between them to all have different abilities is to allow players to have a bit more of a diverse gameplay. Another reason for this is because that means every single specialist can use any primary or secondary weapons, throwables and equipments. Now within the equipments that does mean medical and supply crates as well as rocket launchers. So that's how we're going to have the medical and supply crates coming back into each of the classes 
any of the specialists can use these crates. They're not restricted to the support and like the medic instead. So that means now instead of picking an entire class just because you want to use a certain weapon, you can now just pick a certain specialist. That means you can use their special ability or their specialized gadget. One info that we got about one of these specialists was about Boris, one of the characters that we didn't see in the gameplay trailer itself, or not a full detail about it, is if you are playing as Boris, to use his sentry at his full capacity and its full effectiveness, you will have to stay close to the sentry itself. And two of the weaknesses towards this sentry or turret are explosives and EMPs. So that means in terms of how they've made all these specialists, they've made it more into rock, paper, scissors type of gameplay. If you're playing as Casper and you're fighting against the Boris, Casper can eliminate Boris's turret quite easily because of its EMP recon drone. They gave a bit more detail about the plus menu. And some of the details about the plus menu is that you'll be able to use it for assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, DMRs, shotguns, sniper rifles, pistols, and also explosive ordinances. And within all of those weapon classes, you'll be able to have up to four categories for customizing each of the weapons, depending on any of the weapons itself. Some of the weapons might have less categories and some of them might just have the max of four. Within these categories, if we take, for example, the assault rifles, you'll be able to change the scopes and sights, the muzzles and the barrels, ammo types and magazine sizes, and also the under barrel attachments. We've got some small details about how the vehicle call-in system is going to work in terms of to use the vehicle call-in system, you're going to have to load up the vehicle call-in tablet and you can only have it and only use it within a certain range of yourself and certain areas. But one of the developers, Daniel Berlin, did say that when he was doing a playtest by himself, he did land a tank on top of a recon sol soldier. So, you know, it, it does work in that type of range, but we will have to find out the smallest bit more as we just play it a bit more as well. One thing that's returning to vehicles is that for tanks, we are now finally getting the 360 degree turns for the gunners back again. No more Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1, you're just combed into one little angle. You've now got it all back, back to the good old days. And other things that we learned about some of these certain vehicles is that certain vehicles have different types of seats. In some vehicles, you might be able to have a grenade launcher seat. In other ones, you might be able to have an anti-air seat or a rocket launcher seat. And in one certain vehicle, you'll be able to have a back seat mine seat. That was a lot of seats, but in the back seat, mine seat you'll be able to drop mines behind yourself just in case there are vehicles chasing you down we got the smallest bit of detail about the hazard zone the new mode which i am gathering that we're going to hear a tiny bit of information about just before the ea play live and the only details that we know about this is that it's not being a battle royale do not presume that this is a battle royale thing this is a squad based experience where it relies upon squads itself you have to have communication within a squad but they did say that we're going to hear a tiny bit more information about this very soon and for the final few things that we learned about is that all of the maps for future content are going to be free to all players and of course within the battle passes that we're going to see for each season there's going to be a free tier for the battle pass and also a paid tier for the battle pass within the free tier there's going to be all of the weapons that we're going to see that are going to be free unlocks and within the pay tier, we're going to have a lot of the pay cosmetic stuff towards the weapons, vehicles, and towards specialists. Now, that was all of the details that we found out from the Battlefield briefing that we had on the 15th of June. Remember to like and subscribe, and hopefully we do get a bit more information about the Hazard Zone. Check out the channel for the video on that for when that does come out. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So, peace out.